Carl Jung is really quite radically different in his approach to the psyche than, uh, than other uh, models of psychology, as you may know if you've had a chance to study Jung. Uh, uh, in recent years, there's been a lot of uh, pressure in, uh, in Jungian uh, circles uh, uh, to try to uh, sort of um, sort of uh, reduce the sense of differences between Jung's psychology uh, and other schools of psychoanalytic thought. Uh, I am not one uh, of those who, who uh, feel that that's the way to go for the future of Jung's psychology. And uh, so I want to be speaking tonight about what I think is uh, our key, key uh, assumptions upon which Jung's, Jung works and, uh, and uh, the way that we can be thinking about uh, uh, carrying those forward. What we're looking at here is uh, an image of the Axis Mundi. Now, uh, in, in mythical traditions and spiritual traditions throughout the world, there was always a sense, and I refer you to the work of Mircea Eliade, uh, the great uh, historian and phenomenologist of religion, who was the person, the single person who has, has done the most uh, in the study of world spiritual traditions, to, uh, to point to the role in uh, world uh, spirituality of a sense of a center out there a center, I like to say, with a capital C. Uh, the quest for the center out there is at the heart of world spiritual traditions. And uh, in Jung's psychology, uh, unlike any other psychology, there is a sense of a center beyond the ego. For Jung, there is not simply one center in the personality, the I. There's not simply the I. So many psychologies today emphasize the, uh, what we used to call ego psychology. They've got different labels now, but almost all of them uh, uh, focus on trying to help build the ego of the personality and to, uh, to strengthen the eye of the personality in relating to the various uh, challenges of, uh, of uh, human life. Uh, Jung's psychology has, from the very beginning, and I think it is a fundamental uh, assumption, is that there are two centers uh, in the psyche. Uh, one has to be developed uh, that is the ego, the capacity to have a stable sense of I. But the archetypal self, which we're addressing tonight, is a, is seen, was seen by Jung as a center beyond the I. And um, Jung's quest for, for his entire career was to come to an understanding of the the, the role of the self in human life, the archetypal self, uh, and to understand the importance of the, the I coming to relate to the, uh, to the archetypal self. A organizing center in the personality, we could say two things, that the archetypal self is an, is an organizing center that contains uh, a blueprint, a, uh, a primordial image of wholeness and of integration uh, in the psyche. And uh, uh, another thing that often is not emphasized as much as it should be, but it was implicit in Jung's work, is that the archetypal self, the center outside of the eye in the psyche, was 
an enormous energy generator. And so uh, we'll be thinking about uh, the, those different aspects of the self this evening. But one of the things that I want to just put as a frame here is the emphasis that for Jung's psychology, there is a center outside the eye. Now, in the ancient world, as Jung would put it, people projected that center out on many different objects. Uh, I like to point out that they're project projected on sacred mountains uh, all over the world. I have another uh, presentation in which I uh, show people the various uh, archetypal images of the center out there. But, uh, but in any case, the, the center out there is a point, is experienced as a point, all the pilgrimages that human beings go on are, are actually acting out, ritually acting out the journey to the center with a capital C. So uh, this is, this is uh, in ancient religions, uh, an archetypal projection of that center out there. Now, in that center out there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of imagery in world spiritual traditions about the journey to the center and then the ascent to the center with the implications that when you go to the center, there is a that there is a hierarchy of spiritual development, a hierarchy of development in which one begins to connect to the center, to connect to the energy that comes in through the center. You say that the the uh, the energy comes in uh, on this vertical axis, but if if you've not really connected with the center, then you, you live at the lowest level of human organization. We'll be seeing how this relates to, uh, to the individuation process in a bit. But let's look at it this way. Now this is from the book, The Archetype of Initiation. Uh, so at the le lowest levels of development, there's a great deal of chaos experienced. And, and there is no sense of orientation to a center. One, one is living in a kind of a wasteland. At some point, however, there's, a, there's an experience of an epiphany. That is, there, is, there, is, there appears, we see it in the mythical traditions, there appears uh, a star in the sky that tells the magi, the, the ones who know, that there, is a, that there is a direction to go in to pursue connection with that center and the one who represents that center. And so when that epiphany occurs, then the effort is made to move toward that center and to begin to get energy from the connection to the center. In this, in this location here, this is when, uh, we'll, be, we'll be talking later on, this is when you connect in some way uh, with a manifestation of the sacred, or as Jung would say, a connection with something that you experience as numinous in your, in your life. When you make that connection, there's an, in, there's an energy flow that starts. And that begins to issue in a flow of creativity. Uh, Jung believed that when you begin to connect with, uh, with the archetypal energies of the psyche, that there will be a flood of uh, energy coming in. And uh, you've all heard the term inflation, if, you're, if you've been studying Jung. Inflation is when you get a flood of this archetypal energy 
and it begins to uh, fill you up, uh, fill you up with energy. And, uh, and then if you get really too inflated with energy, you have got to really be developing some capacity for containment of that energy. And when you are capable of having a containment of that energy, then it is better possible, it's more possible for you to be able to, uh, to form relationships in both fam for both family, intimate relationships and community. And then finally, as you mature into a more generative place, you get to the point where you can really uh, uh, be committed, really fascinated with, in, interested in, and committed to generativity in relationship to the world beyond the eye. So that is, that is a, uh, a traditional image of uh, the, uh, the developmental process.